Welcome to Stream It Sports 2017 Coaches Football Preview Show. Today we have Coach Marty McVicker from Pooter High School in Palace. We've got David Haas with us uh, as we want to talk a little bit about Pooter High School football this year. Well, Coach McVicker, now this is just a few years into your tenure as a head coach, but you've been at Pooter a long time. I have. I've been an assistant for 25 years under Coach Yonker. Coach Bradley and then Coach Reardon for his last two years, and then I took over for, for Coach Reardon when he left. Yep, and you see a lot of the staffs in town where you do have longevity, yeah. and it is a great thing to know the guys you're going to go to work with and uh, pretty much go to war with every fall. Every fall, and it's the same way at Fort Collins High School. Rocky Mountain, Coach Brooks had his staff for a long, long time. And Coach Bigelow's big building a staff over there at Fossil Ridge too. So well, it's let's really do a little nice deal. do a quick recap of your of your 2016 season, and let's just talk about you know how that carries into this year. You bet. So we ended up five and five, which is the first time we've been at at least 500 since 2008. So we've gotten a little bit better each of the three years that I've been there. Last year we had two games, one against Fossil Ridge that we lost in overtime, and one that we lost on the last play of the game versus Lakewood, 35-30. 33 we went for two and didn't make it so those two games if we could have picked those two games up I believe that we would have been a playoff team last year so, so how many returning starters do you have in Letterman we have six returning starters on offense and seven on D and then returning Letterman 18 to 20 so pretty senior dominated team this year I well, feel like we're kind of in the similar situation that Fossil was last year well, as you look at the players, mm -hmm. we were talking before the interview, um, you know, you've got one individual, young man hurt his knee last year, missed his whole year. This is going to be his year as a senior. Troy McFadden, yep. Our quarterback hurt his knee in the second game. We were ahead. We won our first game against Douglas County, and we were ahead 17-7 to in the second quarter when uh, Troy tore his ACL. And, um, you know, just we didn't really rebound that well from that game. And then fortunately last year we had James Campbell who had a lot of experience mm -hmm. and we were able to insert him. And again, like I said, if we win Fossil Ridge or we win against uh, Lakewood, you know, it changes our whole season. We're seven and three or, or, you know, six and four instead of five and five. So in addition to Troy McFadden coming back on your offense, who are some of the other key players you're looking forward to uh, yeah. having on the field? You bet. Uh, JT Erickson, he'll be a three-year starter at tailback for us. Okay. Uh, he's, you know, racked up a lot of yards. He's a good-sized kid. He's worked hard in the offseason to build him up. He's 205 pounds now, not super tall, 5'10", 5'11". Zach Leal, who I believe is one of the you know, one of my favorite players of all time and one of the most exciting kids in the city anyway to watch and punt return, kick return. We love to watch him too, don't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's a game changer. He really is, you know, and, um, you know, just we got to figure out ways to get him the ball. He's a great, you know, weapon on offense. He plays both ways for us. We're trying like heck to, to limit the number of guys that we play both ways, and we finally are getting our numbers up to the point where we can do that. But Zach is still one of our guys that, that plays both ways, but he's going to be a great weapon on offense. We have a junior, Josiah Stribling, who's a slot guy who made a lot of plays for us last year. Uh, Kean Ragska will be a senior outside receiver. But the thing that's most exciting for me as the head coach, and I'm more of a running guy than a throwing guy, is our offensive line. And we have four of the five kids back from our offensive line from last year, led by Weston Mayer at left tackle. Um, left guard is Zach Stinnett. Our center, we're moving our right tackle, excuse me, our left guard is um, Tyler Stillwagon. We moved our right tackle, Cole Young, into center. Sharp kid, 4.0 kid, and you guys know the center is a pretty critical place. Our right guard is Zach Stinnett, and then we're still trying to figure out our right tackle. That's the one position that we, that we don't have a returning starter at. So that's, that's a really exciting thing for me. It's always really uh, powerful to have a senior-laden team in high school, and also the numbers. You know, we talk a lot on our broadcasts when the Denver teams come up, correct? And the the difference in the numbers of participation in a lot of those schools, and you're in a conference right now that is uh, is pretty wild. Uh, just comment a little bit about this co conference, the realignment. You bet. Uh, you know. Well, and it, that's a good, great question. I just had my meeting last night, which is completely different than it used to be. You know, I used to go to the meeting with Coach Brooke and Coach Rice and those guys and the guys from the Front Range League for forever because I would go with Coach Yonks or, you know, along with mm -hmm. those guys. But anyway, now we all meet in Lake, at Lakewood High School and we're all all over the place. And our meeting was last night. And again, you're talking mm -hmm. about numbers. 
Valor asked me if we could have a, a freshman B game, you know, because he has 70 some wow. freshmen. Lakewood has over 50. Um, and then Highlands Ranch has 60 some freshmen. We, I am so excited about this year because when I got the head coaching job, we had 84 total kids in our program, freshman through senior. And I really believe that we're going to have 110 this year. Oh, now we awesome. can't have we can't have a freshman B team, but uh, <laughs> you know that's, that's the kind of questions that I get though. Yeah. Just last night, you know, could you field another freshman team? Well, you know, I can't, but you know, it would be nice to have that you know, that thing. That's, but that, you're right, the the conferences, and I really believe after this year, this thing's going to go away. Do you? There's too much. There's too much. Nobody's trouble. happy with this, are they? Really? One team, Eagle Crest, is the only only team that I know of. That's even even the teams that really wanted it, like Cherry Creek and. Valor and Pomona and all those teams out in Jeffco, they don't think it's a good thing anymore. So. Well, when we, the schedules came out last year, and it'd be just the flip side this year, but the distances you've got to drive, um, the furthest away from any 5A school in the state, you're going. I Fountain, mean, Fountain Fort Carson. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, it's just it's the front range. If you're looking just the front range, right. nobody could drive further, and they got and they got to make the trip back. I Correct. mean, so that that's tough on a kid too. That's a different. They're, they're, that's a whole day. It is a tough thing, and you know, uh, a lot and a lot. Fountain Fort Carson fortunately has their own field, but a lot of our schools are just like are just like French Field, where they share it with three or four different. We play our second game of the season versus Mountain Vista at eight o'clock on a Thursday night at Shea Stadium down in Highlands Ranch. And their coach came right out and told me last night, he said, you know, if we start at eight, we'll be lucky because there's a soccer game before us. So it might be 8.30, 8.45. Wow. And then we have school the next day. So that's, just, a, that's just, a tough one. For the broadcaster, it's been good though, because we've got to see a lot of teams I agree. that we would not normally I see. I got to meet some new coaches that I would, yeah. like the, the coaches in my league in the Mountain Lincoln League, Coach Sherman from Valor, quality guy. Coach Robinson from Highlands Ranch, I like him a lot. Coach Braun from Lakewood, um, he's been there forever. He was at Mullen for a long time. The Fountain Fort Carson guy's just like me. He's young, or not, I'm not young. I say <laughs> I got we weren't going to let that go. <laughs> uh, he's in his fourth year as well right. as a head coach. And, young as a head coach. Uh, yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just been, it's been fun. I met Monty Thielen, kind of got to know him a little bit. He had been at Cherokee Trail forever, and now he's at Legend, and they're in our conference as well. Mm -hmm. So, But I really think after talking to these guys last night that this is, you know, Gates, you know, rivalries, you know, yeah, uh, it's, you know, it's just gone away. They've lost all that. Well, speaking of some of those rivalries here, you know, about your kids you got back on offense, let's quickly get back and do some of your defense, then we'd kind of like to go to the other teams that you perceive the, uh, the local schools and, and this year going. You bet. Our defense, we've got a number of kids back in our secondary and our, our linebackers. We're going to play Weston Mayer this year at linebacker instead of defensive tackle. He's sacrificed for us. He's been a great team player, and we've We've asked him to play defensive line for his... And he's a kid that's got next-level abilities along with J.T. Erickson, I believe, has already got offers too, correct? correct. I mean, they both, both have got some offers. Both and, uh, of them have, yeah. yes. Yep. And also Bryce Ramler, uh, one of our outside linebackers, has been offered by Western State. Nice-looking kid. He's 6'4", 6'5". Mm -hmm. Can put some more weight on. He's 210, 215. But, um, yeah, so we're excited about those kids. Our interior line are smaller guys and, and juniors that, haven't, that don't have much experience, but... Uh, we gained so much experience at CSU Pueblo. We got so many quality reps down there. It was it was a great camp, and we learned a lot about those young guys inside too. So. And we've we've seen some pretty good specials coming off of your squad too. You know, uh, you Braxton Davis now yes. kicking for the Rams. Right. Um, how do you think your punting and kicking will be this year? That's a that's a, such a huge question mark for us, and that you know as well as I do, it's a third of the game, and it's probably as important as anything else. And we've had Braxton Davis. And Austin Davis, we've had the Davis. That's right, I forgot about Austin. Yeah. For six years, six straight yeah. years kicking and punting for us. So those are two positions that we're really going to have to work on. And, and we have some younger kids that we're working on and that we're hoping to develop this fall. So, But, yeah, it's critical for us. And we, we talk a lot about, you know, the public schools. There's no recruiting. You get who, you get who comes to the to the game exactly <laughs> unless you're valor you yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's the one caveat we always throw in too exactly <laughs> there's some others you know mowing in some of those schools but you, and you guys probably know this as well as i do but four three of the four best middle school kids eighth graders from last year are at valor this year from fort collins you know so yeah, uh, i feel terrible that. for coach bigelow at, at fossil he lost 
three three really good players that that should be at his school. Yeah, that's it's an interesting uh, plight dilemma, whatever you want to call it here in Colorado. But there, you know, kids are mobile, and not just for scholastics, obviously, and and it does affect. There's other you know sports and teams here in town that do that, but. So talking about those other teams here in town, um, you get to take the, the shot of looking at the, how the Lobos and the, and the Sabercats and the uh, Lampkins are going to do this year. And um, You've seen them around for the years. You know what those, those schools and those squads are like. What do you think that you see for this fall? Well, always, you know, with Coach Rice and Coach Brook, they have so darn much experience, and they, they coach their teams well. And Coach Bigelow is the same way. You know, he's come from college, and I know he's building his program over there. He had, you know, I think the best team in town last year. And he had some a senior laden team that you know he's going to have to replace some guys. But all three of the schools here in town, that's what makes it a lot of fun is to play those other schools, you know. And Coach Brook and Coach Rice are defensive minded coaches. You know you're going to get great defense from from those two teams, um, you know. And like I said, I'm just this will be my second time to go against Coach Bigelow, but he's a great guy, and I, I enjoy competing against all three of those guys. And the nice thing about the city of Fort Collins is. All four of the head coaches and a lot of our assistants know each other because it's, it's still a small town, mm -hmm. relatively, you know. And so we all get along, and, and it's just a fun night, a fun competition, and our kids love to play each other, too. I know they're all three going to be good, so it'll all be fun those three nights. And the nice thing about it now is we just go right back to back to back with them. So yeah. it's a fun yeah. three weeks, fun month. That's one of the differences with realignment. It, those, those aren't the end-of-the-year games, which... Frankly, we kind of miss, you know, that little, sure. you know, it gets a build up to it. You know, maybe a little bit more on the table as far as the stakes go, the right. winners and losers. But uh, there's no less passion. No, no. And like you said, the last time that Pooter was even relevant was 2008, and we went into the Rocky game, which I believe was the eighth game of the season, and we were both seven and zero. Oh, and you know, they had to bring in extra stands for for the game, and uh, it was a great game. Rocky beat us 14 to zero, you know, and both of us advanced that year in the playoffs. We went to the final four, they went to the final eight, you know, so you're right. Some of that stuff like that. And that's again, why I believe that the state's going to look at this and, and reverse it to some, I don't know what they'll do for sure yet, but I know, I don't think it's going to be the same format yeah. that it is yeah. now. I can't imagine that they're selling the amount of tickets they're for not. live with these because you know the people who are going to come to these games here and our, even our broadcast our best numbers are still the city games correct and people and it's it's alumni correct is who it is it's people mm -hmm. who still live here who still check in to see what pooter's exactly. doing exactly. and so the denver teams though they draw well on our broadcast is still our top five i believe games are we're the still city the city game. we're still the city yeah. games and i don't doubt it and that's why Pomona and those school districts, they lost a ton of money at their gate, at the Jeffco Gates last year, and that's why they're looking at going back to, you know, something that's, yeah. I, I don't know, again, what it will be, but I believe it'll be more of a, you know, geographical thing, so to speak, yeah. so. That's good. Uh, besides wins and losses, what is it that you hope to really uh, uh, inspire your kids with or your players and stuff not just wins and losses but what what where do you want them to be at the end of this season as as far as just people and, and students and different things that's a great question we are implementing a thing and I'm really excited about this it's the first time that we're doing it but we're uh, teaming with champ and we're gonna do um, we've already started to do it this summer we bought uh, a curriculum out of Texas that was put together by Texas high school football coaches hmm. They're and not we, really into football in Texas, are they? High holy school? cow! We I just went to a champ thing this weekend. That were you? Were you at the? Mm -hmm. No, football? couldn't make. I was gone. Anyway, a high school coach from Texas, from the, the Dallas area, and I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank with his name, came to speak to us about character and stuff. And he has a losing record. He's made the playoffs five times in 25 years. And he said every other coach would have been fired probably at this point with him, but he's in a school that is um, free and reduced kind of a rough mm -hmm. area and so he teaches character 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 and that's exactly what we're going to try and do this year we started with four lessons this summer during our uh, summer workouts and we're going to carry we like i said we there's a book that goes along with it and we're trying to teach the kids character a lot of our kids at pooter um, are from single family parents you know one mm -hmm. either mom or dad usually mother and so we're trying to teach a lot of these kids how to be a man. Mm -hmm. So the wins and losses, they're great, 
but that doesn't keep the me winds coaching. are great. No, excuse me. Yeah, <laughs> the wins are great. The losses aren't much fun. They're a lot harder as a head coach too. But oh, I bet. Um, but yeah, you're right. The um, the character piece, trying to teach these kids, you know, how to become young men and how to treat people. And you know, again, we and I know other schools struggle with it too. But just grades, we're we're on our guys about grades all the time, each and every week. And you see it. You'll you'll you guys know. You'll see a kid that's missing for a week, and it's because of academics it's not anything else well yeah. and you get a chance as a coach and, and you know the parents and all of us have been on all sides of that and even back way back in the day when we were on a field um, the lessons you get from coaches the lessons you get from your teammates and that time it goes so fast it's very valuable but it's remembered always oh. and, and um, kudos to you for everything you do for those kids Thank but uh, it is it is a lesson that uh, got to be repeated over and over it is football in, in, in any sport wrestling uh, basketball whatever it is there's some life lessons in there that you know you're gonna get knocked down you got to get back up and and go on whether it's with your job or, or whatever when you get older your wife whatever it might be so so uh, I'm just gonna add this in so you're going to Valor this year Correct. aren't you mm -hmm. what do you think about that I'm excited they have a great stadium down there I don't know if you guys have done any games down there yet or not no, we but have not uh, I've been down there with my boys for wrestling at Valor in the wintertime. They have their on-campus stadium. It's beautiful. They're actually, I believe, building like a sports, uh, like almost a field house. They have, that's their next big thing. Of course but, they are. <laughs> and I tell you what, I have a new, the, the league realignment and stuff has, has opened my eyes to a lot of things. But Coach Sherman, has, he's been great with me. Um, you would be surprised. I, I think you guys would like him as well. And mm -hmm. I'm excited to go to Valor. You know, we, our kids are, it's a great experience. They've been the state champion seven or eight years, seven out of eight years or eight out of nine. And went from mm -hmm. 4A to 5A flawlessly. Correctly. Really. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Wasn't they, even a, so tell us, we've got, I know we've got uh, a couple of, uh, I think three home games, four home games. Tell us, uh, a couple of home games that you've got circled that, uh, you've been, well, obviously to. right out the, right off the sh you know we play douglas county first which will be that's a i'm excited just to get mm -hmm. going we play a zero we yeah you're, you're right off the bat this year we really are yeah, we're our first broadcast great we are two weeks from friday is our first game mm -hmm. um against douglas county then like i was telling you we go to mountain vista for that eight eight thirty nine o'clock yes. uh, thursday night game but then we come home to play four collins on a thursday night which i love playing four collins high school uh, then we play uh, Fossil and Rocky. So those three games right in a row. And then by playing that zero-week game, we draw a bye after our game with Rocky. Oh. So we have a, uh, a week off, and then we go into league play, which our first game is Fountain Fort Carson, which is the travel, the long trip game. So And you've got Lakewood as well, don't Lakewood you? Lakewood and Legend here at home. Yep, yep. Lakewood would be... Uh, We'll play Fountain Fort Carson, our first league game after our bye. Then we come home for two uh, first ones against Legend High School, then Lakewood, and then we go to Valor. And then our, we finish up at Highland. That's a nice little run. Isn't it, it is. And our league last year, you know, if you look at the power points and everything, our league was the number one league in the state. We had uh, mm -hmm. Valor and Highlands Ranch both in the top seven teams. So it's a, it's a tough league. It's a challenge for sure. But, um, you know, I think we're up for if it. If you're going to. Yeah. If you're going to play, you might as well play at the, the best, huh? Exactly. Exactly. That's great. So, Well, thank you so much, thank Coach you. McVicker. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. And uh, this is Randy it. McCoy and David Haas, Coach McVicker, and we will see you next time. All right. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.